Hi everybody, it's Chris. Um, I have a friend who asked me to put together a sequence for beginners. And so that's what I'm gonna do today. It's gonna be short, like 20 to 30 minutes. And the primary things to remember are breath, as always, is critical. Your breath is your greatest tool. It is your greatest power. If you let your breath guide your practice and continue checking in with your breath, as you're doing your yoga, you will find um, that you then are doing that in your life and that can profoundly change your life. It can energize you when you need energy and it can calm you down when you need centering. So thinking about the breath. And the second thing I wanted to mention today is we're gonna be doing some side body stretches and um, why the side body? Why is that so important? There's a train of connective tissue on the side of your body that goes from the bot from your feet all the way up into your neck and head. And it crosses the intercostals, the side of your ribs. If that side body is locked and tight, it basically acts as a lock for the rest of your body. So part of why you'll always find yourself doing side stretches in yoga classes or um, side angle pose from warrior two is because that side body, opening and lengthening that side body is really important to opening the rest of your body. So those are the two main things that I wanted to mention before we start. This is gonna be a shorter practice. Make sure you have a playlist queued up that you love, that you're gonna rock to, because it will make the time go really fast. And um, hopefully you'll be able to do this, you know, anytime that you feel like you need a little boost. So, let's go. So start either seated or kneeling. If you wanna put a block or a pillow underneath your butt to lift your hips up higher than your waist, that is a good idea for people that have issues with knees especially. We're just gonna spend a minute here connecting to ourselves, connecting to our breath. So one hand over your heart, one hand over your belly, and just start to notice what your breath is doing today. Do you feel your top hand moving? Is your breath coming into your chest? Do you feel your bottom hand moving? Is your breath coming into your belly? Can you feel the back of your body rising and falling? Just notice where your breath is landing in your body. Noticing any quality of your breath. Does it feel shallow? Does it feel jumpy and ripply? Or does it feel smooth? Breathing through the nose if you can. And then setting an intention for class. A gift that you'd like to give to yourself today. Something that you've been intending and want to really deeply plant the seed. It can be for relaxation or for centeredness. Joy. Groundedness. Maybe just to receive a little love. And then bringing your hands together at your heart center and just giving a little bow to yourself, honoring yourself for choosing to practice today when you could be doing any other number of things you chose to take the time to give to yourself.
very wise. So from here, go ahead and stand up. Feet can be hip width apart. Settle into your body. And this pose is going to be called mountain pose. It is a standing pose. And, and what mountain pose is, it's an active stand. So toes are spread wide. Your quads in the front, your thighs are engaged. Your knees are not locked. Your tailbone is down and you're drawing your navel in. Your ribs are lifted up off of your hips and your shoulders are relaxed. Your fingers are spread wide, and you're drawing the backs of your outer shoulder blades in. And it's as if someone is lengthening you from out the top of your head. This is an active standing pose. Inhale, and let your arms float up. Exhale, and let your arms float down. Inhale, bend the knees slightly and let your arms float up. Exhale, let the arms float down, bend the knees slightly. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. On your next inhale, sweep the arms up, grab onto the left wrist, for a side body stretch to the right. Think about rooting your left foot into the ground, keeping the hips nice and even, and lifting the left ribs off of the left hip. Inhale back to center, sweep the arms down. Inhale up, other, other side. Root to rise. Rooting the feet, rising up, lifting the ribs off the hips. Can you keep your breath steady in these side angle, side stretching poses? Back to center in an inhale, exhale, bend the knees, inhale up. And this time when you exhale, sweep all the way down for a forward fold. If you need to bend the knees, go ahead and bend the knees, but let this pose be soft. So if you want to use a couch or a chair to prop yourself up because this is too much of a stretch, feel free to keep that in mind for next time if there's not a chair handy. Otherwise, if this is comfortable, drop the neck and head. Shake out some yeses and noes. And walk your hands forward and walk your feet back to plank. Drop the knees. Hands under shoulders. Knees under your hips for some gentle cat-cow stretches. So inhale, let the belly sink, lift the gaze. Exhale, round the back, tuck the chin. Inhale, let the belly sink, lift the gaze. Exhale, round the back, tuck the chin. Send your hips back and to the right for a little stretch in your hips. Come forward, send your hips back and to the left. Back to center, and this time send your hips back, knees wide, child's pose. You can rest your forehead on your stacked fist. You can rest your forehead on the mat, but knees are wide.
and reconnect with your breath here. Send your breath to the back of your body. Send your breath to your spine. Inhale, come on up to all fours. Tuck the toes under. And slowly lift your hips up and back to down dog. Knees should be soft. Elbows should be soft, just so they're not locked. And you're gonna think about as if someone is pulling the base of your spine towards the ceiling and pulling your head towards the floor, lengthening your spine as long as it can get. From here, look at your hands, walk your feet up to meet your hands for a forward fold and inhale halfway lift so your back is flat. Exhale, sweep all the way down. And then inhale, come all the way up. Grab onto that left wrist again for a side body stretch. You may feel a little more space on the side of your body the second time around. Back to center, other side. Keep the navel drawn in. Lift the ribs off the hips. Are your shoulders squeezing your ears? If they are, see if you can relax them down. And then back to center, drop the arms. Hands on your hips. Send your left leg back. Front knee is bent. Back knee is straight. If it feels like it's too much of a strain on your hip or a stretch to have that back knee straight, you can bend it. Draw the navel in, let the tailbone sink down. Think about lifting your heart up to the sky and lift the arms up. This is crescent lunge. in the glutes, sending that right knee out over the right pinky toe. Bring your hands to heart center. Inhale, send them up. Exhale, make goalpost arms. Staying in your crescent lunge, think about lifting your heart up to the sky and drawing the shoulder blades together. Inhale the arms up, exhale this time, twist the arms, excuse me, twist the torso. So your left arm is forward, your right leg is forward, your right arm is back, your left leg is back. Not too long of a hold here. Bring your arms back up, bring that back leg up to meet the front. Exhale the arms all the way down. Step back to plank. Lower your knees to the ground. Take one cat cow. Lifting the gaze, rounding the back. Then drop all the way down to your belly. Let your forehead rest on the mat. Take two breaths here. And then stack your elbows under your shoulders. Draw the navel in, push the toenails into the floor, and lift the gaze. This is called Sphinx Pose. We support the lower back by drawing the navel in. Lower down to the mat, tuck the toes under, and push back to downward dog. Bend the knees if you want to. Make sure your elbows are not locked. You can even pedal out your feet a little bit here. 
Look at your hands. Walk your feet up for a forward fold. Inhale the arms up. And this time send your right foot back for a crescent lunge on the other side. Back leg, knee is bent, front knee is bent. You can start with your hands on your hips and make sure your hips are nice and square. And then send the arms up to the sky. Drawing the tailbone down, drawing the navel in, softening the shoulders. Inhale the arms up, exhale the goal post arms. Think about lifting your heart up to the sky, drawing the shoulder blades together and down. Inhale the arms up. This time we're going to twist to the left. Right arm goes forward. Left arm goes back. Bring that back arm forward. Bring your back leg up to meet your front leg. Inhale the arms up. Exhale all the way down. Release the neck and head. Step back to plank. Lower all the way down to the mat. You can drop the knees first if you want. Flip the toes, press the toenails into the ground, come up to sphinx. Lower all the way down to the mat and push back to downward dog. Look at your hands, walk your feet up to meet your hands. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, let it go down. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Grab onto your left wrist. This time, kick your left foot behind your right for a side body stretch. Back to center, switch sides. Think about lengthening, getting as tall as you can from your navel up and rooting down from your navel down, getting as deep and solid as you can. Back to center, lower the arms down, hands to heart center, check in with your breath. Breathing in through your mouth, or excuse me, in through your nose, and let it go through your mouth. And do that again. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Flat back, exhale down, forward fold. From here, take your right leg back behind you for a runner's lunge. So your knee is over your ankle, your back leg is straight, or if this is no good, drop your knee down to the, to the floor. From here, plant your right hand on the ground so left foot, right hand, send your left hand to the sky. Draw that hand back down. Bring your left, your right foot that's behind you a little bit closer and stand all the way up. 
this time warrior two. So your back foot is parallel with the edge of your, the short side of your mat, and your front foot, your toes are pointing out perpendicular to your back foot. Your hips can be facing the long side of your mat, and then you're sinking into your front knee. This is a wide stance, arms float up. Your gaze can be out in line with your hips, or they can float over looking out past your front fingers. Warrior pose, rooting down. Same thing though, lifting the ribs up off the hips. From here, flip your front palm and slowly lift your gaze up. If this is enough, stay here, or you can send your right hand to your lower back and add a little more. Back to warrior two. Bring your left elbow to your left knee and extend the right arm on a diagonal as if your ankle and your leg is in a straight line with your shoulder and your arm. Side angle pose. And then come on back up to warrior two. From here, windmill both arms down to plank. So send your foot back. Drop all the way down to your belly, come up to Sphinx, back down, push back to Downward Dog. And look at your hands and walk your feet forward, forward fold, inhale halfway lift, exhale down. From here, send your left foot back for runner's lunge. So your front knee is over your ankle. If you wanna drop your back knee down, you can. Breathe here, lift the gaze a little. Drop the left palm next to your right foot and send the right hand to the sky. Lower the hand down, bring that back foot forward just a bit, and then stand up to warrior two. Back foot is parallel with the short side of your mat. Front foot is perpendicular with toes pointing out. Try to think about sending your knee over your pinky toe so it doesn't flop forward and hips can be open. Draw the navel in, let the shoulders sink. Think about becoming as big as you can be in all directions in this pose. Flip the front palm and send your hand up to the sky. What are you receiving? You want to add your hand behind your back and a little more bend. If that feels good, do it. Back to warrior two and let your right elbow find your right knee. For a side angle, think about opening up your chest to the sky. Showing the sky your heart while you're strengthening your back. Come on back up to warrior two. Windmill the arms down. Find a plank. Lower all the way 
way down to the mat. Come back up to Sphinx. Lower down, and this time push back to Child's Pose. Knees are wide, toes are together, and rest your forehead on something, either your stacked fists or the mat. Before we do our final cool down exercises, we're going to come to cat cow again. And this time, let your spine and your intuitive sense guide your movement. A huge part of yoga is letting your intuition and your spontaneous movement come from within. So, this was our traditional cat cow. But, you can add that into barrel rolls, which would be a rolling kind of a movement. You can send your hips back in either direction. You can walk your hands forward. What does your spine want? What does your neck want? And just let your body find some spontaneous movement that feels good to you. Let your body lead. Yoga is not just about making shapes. It is about listening to yourself, to your body's inner wisdom. So when you've done that, find yourself in a seat and lower yourself all the way down to your back. Keep your knees up and draw your knees into your chest, gently rolling side to side. Extend both legs up in the air. If you want to grab onto the bottom or to the backs of your hamstrings to keep your legs up, you can. Roll around your feet. Lower the feet, send the right leg up to the sky and cross the right ankle over the left knee and draw the left knee towards you. Your, other, your left foot could be up to the sky or it can be bent and relaxed. And you should feel a stretch in through your glutes and piriformis here. If pulling this is too much, just this is enough if you can feel a stretch here. So when you've done, you're done with that side, switch to the other side. So left ankle over right knee, and if this feels like a stretch, stay here. Otherwise, draw the knee in towards you. Unwind, bring both e knees into your chest and rock back and forth. And then keeping the knees in, extend the arms out to a T and lower both knees to the right for a twist. 
and you can let your gaze gently drift to the left. One knee at a time, come back to center. From here, take a breath in with your nose and let it out through your mouth. And do that again. And let your knees drop to the other side and let your gaze fall to the right. Bring to mind your original intention that you had for class, for this sequence, and know that just by bringing your attention to it, you're bringing life and energy to it. One knee at a time, back to center, roll out side to side, lower your feet down, let your feet be on the outside of your mat and let your knees drop so that they're touching, one hand over your heart, one hand over your belly, just like how we started, and tune in with your breath. Where is your breath landing now? Is it high up in your chest? Is it low in your belly? Has it changed quality or sensation since when you first started your practice? Invite your mind and emotions to just let go of one thing that it's been holding on to and doesn't need to hold on to anymore. You can just simply say, I invite myself to let go of one thing. Can I let something go? And then extend your feet out, hands out, palms up. This is your final resting pose. And this is the time when your body integrates the yoga that you've done. And all you need to do is lay and rest. Shavasana. Start to wiggle your fingers and toes. Add a 
little movement. Eventually taking your time, rolling onto your side. Really taking care of yourself and honoring yourself for showing up. Moving slowly and gently, make your way to a seat. Hands to heart center. At the end of yoga, it's tradition to say that the light in me sees and honors the light in you. And the word for that in Sanskrit is namaste. And so until next time, thank you for taking time for yourself and for your practice.